The will. The will. A lot of people don't have them. Two thirds of people don't have them. At all. It's an astonishing figure, really. Um, yeah. I'm astonished, and I mean, the, the bottom line to this is that two thirds of people don't actually have a will at the time when they die. Uh, that's right, yes. Yeah, I mean, there was a recent survey done by the National Consumer Council, which, which sort of went into some detail on this. And I think it was sort of 64% have not made a will, right. which leaves an awful lot of people who, if they were to die, would die intestate and be at the, you know, be subject to the laws of intestacy, which right. are quite strange. Right. When you say quite strange? Well, I think the problem with the laws of intestacy is they're well meant, but yeah. they were written really in, in a different time, I think, and they don't necessarily reflect what we would want to happen now. For example, if a husband dies, his assets do not all automatically pass to his wife. Um, if they die together, some strange things particularly can happen. Nice. Um, for example, you may very well end up leaving your assets to your in-laws inadvertently if you haven't got a will. Um, there are other things such as, you know, it doesn't all go to your wife or husband necessarily, so some will go to the children, mm -hmm. um, which again, you may not choose it to happen that way. Right. And that can cause inheritance tax to be paid um, when the first person dies as well. So just really uh, objectionable things really that you wouldn't choose to happen and you can avoid if you make a will. If you die in test day, I, I suppose that really means that no one knows what you want to happen. I think that's the point and these laws of intestacy are, are making the best guess at what you would have chosen. Now I mean if, if you really sort of look at what happens in some other European countries they, they, they put us to shame really, their, mm -hmm. their laws are far more strange than our own. So, um, But the, the point being yeah it's the best guess at you know, what would they have wanted before they died. Right. Now I, I think you, we, we shouldn't alarm people too much in these things because any joint assets will pass to the survivor. Um, but it's assets held in your own name which are sort of, you know, they're the worry really. Bank accounts though are mostly held in people's individual Well they usually right? are, yeah, they usually are, so that's that's a big issue. And it, it, you know, the greater the, your wealth, the more likely this is to be a problem right. sort of thing. Right. Tell me why or why you think people don't write a will. Are they afraid of thinking about it or what? I, I think, you know, it's one of them things you just don't get round to. I think people have a general perception that if they did die unexpectedly, things would probably be all right. And I, I really can't explain it any more than that. I think people historically have probably worried about having to go into a sort of solicitor's office with a big green leather desk and a solicitor with his half moon glasses kind of thing. And, and I think generally the older generation are probably a bit wary of, of that anyway. Um, other than that, I can't say, I mean, certainly my mother-in-law is Scottish and, and I don't know if it's a Scottish thing, but she kind of has a feeling that once you've made a will, that's it. It mm -hmm. will somehow hasten your d demise kind right, of thing. Right, right. But I, I can honestly say I've never written a will for somebody and they've died very soon afterwards, <laughs> apart from the sort of few occasions where we have to go into hospitals for people mm -hmm. who really have left it too late, yeah. you know. Um, yeah. You might have things that have been in the family for a long time, which you might want to leave to brothers or sisters right. or to the, the eldest son or something. Mm -hmm. People often want to make gifts to charities in their will. Right. Without a will, you can't do that, yeah. you know. Um, for younger people, of course, there's the problem with what happens to children. Um, you know, if if your both parents are killed, uh, you know, in a car crash or something awful, mm. the, the children do not automatically go where you would want them to. You have to have that in a will. And of course, while that doesn't necessarily apply particularly to the older generation, what we find in speaking to older people is we say to them, get your kids to to make a will as well. You know, because that's their problem sort of thing. So there are lots of little things that you would really like to have written down because they won't happen if, if you don't, you know. Right, and you can also have some fun with it, I suppose, because you can leave unexpected things to people who don't expect them. Well, you can, and there's a, there's a long history of these sort of things. Mm -hmm. We tend to steer people away from bizarre requests. Right. Um, one, because I think some, some of them can, can lead to legal yep. issues, yep. really, and difficulties. Mm -hmm. But also, I'll give you an example. We had um, one of our consultants was had a client who was about 35 
and she said her funeral wishes were that a party would be held, nobody was allowed to be sad, and her ashes were to be put in a firework right. and sent up into the sky at this party. Mm -hmm. Which you might kind of think, well, you know, but I, what the, the point I tried to get across was, look, you're 35. If you were to die next week, I would imagine your parents are probably going to be a bit sad about that. You, they may go for the party idea, I don't know. But could you imagine your parents mourning this 35-year-old and then, right, it's fi time for the firework. Do you know what I mean? And, mm. and <laughs> so... It's funny as we sit here, but if it had actually come to pass, I don't think anybody would have found that particularly funny no, or enjoyable. No, you know, no, so. no. no, it's a very, it's a good point, isn't it? I mm. So you can do, you could do something like that, but you have to actually judge it a little bit more than just your first thought. Maybe. I, I think so, and that, that's really what what we're for. You know, mm. people will have things they want to achieve in their will, right. and we will talk about the best way to do it. I mean, we talked about disposal of body. Another thing we we put in wills is whether you would be prepared to give your organs. Now, mm -hmm. clearly, that's not um, something, you know, nobody's going to have a chance to read your will while they're sure. trying to decide whether to take your kidneys sort of thing. But the point is, if two weeks le later, somebody's, you know, sister is saying he would never have wanted them to take his organs, somebody can then show him the will and say, look, he did, that right. is what he wanted. Right. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. So it yeah. can stop family arguments as well in a mm. funny sort of way. You, you have phrases like putting your affairs in order mm. and, and things like that. I, I think what people understand once they've made a will is the peace of mind that comes with it. You know, people often say to me, God, this is a bit of a morbid job you've, you've got here, isn't it? And I, I say, it's not at all, really. I, I don't think of this as anything to do with dying in a, in a strange way. It's about, you know, knowing that if the unexpected were to happen, that you've got everything in place right. and, and they're not going to leave problems for those you've left behind and that you know that's you sort of showing your love for them that you wouldn't want them to go through any difficulties because you didn't make a will sort of thing if you haven't made a will you you kind of know that you should really and there is a thing in the back of people's minds telling them you know and they will get around to it one day and and you know we try and sort of <laughs> hasten that day really yeah. but we, we know deep down, everybody knows that we really ought to write a will if we have any assets or children. They, they, if you have assets or children, then you really need to write a will.